All right, well, another Democratic state doubling down on vaccine mandates. California Governor Gavin Newsom announcing Friday that his state will be the first in the nation to require all eligible K-12 through students to get a COVID vaccine. I mean, Newsom went on to lay out how the mandate rollout would look like. Look at this. We intend to do that once the FDA has fully approved the vaccine, which will give us time to work with districts, give us time to work with parents and educators uh, to build more trust and confidence and build out a logistics. Wow, shocking. Joining us now to discuss is the director of the Center for Economic Opportunity and the Independent Women's Forum, Patrice Lee Anwuka. So, Patrice, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little stunned by this because in 2018-19 flu season, um, we had about 52,000 kids hospitalized for flu. To date, for COVID, we've had less than 4,000 kids hospitalized for flu or for uh, COVID. And it, it, to me, it just doesn't seem like they're affected in a way that you need to start mandating vaccines that hasn't even been approved for kids yet. I think you're absolutely right. And good morning. Uh, I think it's scary what's happening in California, and it's not likely to end in California. Uh, what you have here is a, a mandate uh, for really elementary and middle school students here. That's what we're talking about when these uh, vaccines are, are uh, FDA approved. And it is we're, we're trying to inoculate kids who are not the fastest spreaders, which the governor kind of hit it, hint, hinted at when he said there's a, still a struggle that we need to get to where we need to be. And that uh, that means we need to do more and we need to, to do better. So is he suggesting that uh, elementary school kids are the ones who are driving the COVID uh, spread in California? Hello, southern border. Uh, I think he needs to answer that. It's a really great distraction. Parents should be irate. They should be, um, you know, up at arms at what the state is trying to do, not only to tell, to take over and determine what's best for their children's bodies, but also just to replace them and their own decision making. You know, Patrice, mentioning the uh, southern border, we saw those 15,000 immigrants that were under Del Rio's bridge, and they, we don't know what their vaccination was. But you're also mentioning the kids. Now, there's two different age groups here. It's 5 to 12, and then from 12 to 18 that they're focusing on vaccinating. And the older age group could be as soon as July. Now, Newsom led the charge when it came to statewide lockdowns. How do you think this is going to affect other states going forward when it comes to vaccinating children? Well, I think we've seen that you have half of states which are more than willing to impose these draconian measures, and you have half of states that want to celebrate freedom and liberty and personal choice in this country. And so it would not surprise me if states like New York, uh, states like New Jersey, uh, going north to Oregon, you know, I, a lot of the Democratic-led states uh, jump on board, and they're probably just waiting to see what happens with California, if they're going to be legal challenges, for example. But I can't help but think this is going to hit poor black and brown students, most in California, right. uh, in those school districts, kids who you know just are finally getting back into the class, now you're gonna try to penalize them if they yeah. don't take this vaccine. And we've got, to, uh, we've got to say that parents, number one, need to stand up, even against pressure, and number two, we need more school choice. Yeah, you know, Patrice, it was interesting, uh, Sotomayor in the Supreme Court denied a, a, a chance for people to challenge this in the New York City school or in the New York school districts. I got to say, like this coming from the body of my the party of my body, my choice, it's an awful fast flip, no? Oh, it's it's uh, convenient. Uh, it, it's my body, my choice apparently only applies to reproductive rights when it, and it doesn't apply to your choice over vaccines. Now, hey, I'm vaccinated. I think it's great to be vaccinated, but that's a choice I made with my family and my health professional professionals. What the, these governors are trying to do, like Newsom, is take that choice away from the individual. Mm. Uh, and, and the irony is that you have people talking about choice and, and marching about choice, but they don't mean choice when it comes to the vaccine. And right. so that is what's wrong. We need, to, well, we need to empower people with information and let them make the decisions for themselves. But also part of the science is recognizing who is impacted most by COVID-19. Mm. And I don't think it's fourth and fifth graders. Yeah, Patrice, you also mentioned the demographic of blacks and Hispanics and how they're going to be affected negatively. We saw that over the last year with kids staying home and doing school. It takes a hit on mental health. Yep. How do we make sure that we protect our children if, like we're talking about, it's not my body, my choice, if they're being forced to get these vaccines? Well, it's so difficult, right? Because we already have kids who are behind to begin with, um, who are a year plus behind in their studies because of COVID-19 lockdowns and the fact that so many school districts did yep. not have in-person learning. So it's going to be hard. But I do think it's important, again, at, at Independent State Women's State Forum, we are arming... 
we got we are engaging yeah. parents to speak out. And hey, we are actually yeah. getting hit pieces like the Washington Post coming for us when right. we give parents what they what it but, needs to Patrice, what they need to stand up for. I hate to cut you off, but I appreciate you joining us, Patrice <laughs> Lee Anwuka. Thank you for your time. Thank you.